My task is to look at China's rise and suggest how that affects, was affected by the international system and some of the security questions that arise because China is a different kind of player than it was a few decades ago. Let me go straight to one of two bottom lines. And that's the observation that the international system has changed China a lot more than China has or is likely to change the international system. The direction of causality is more strongly the impact of participation in an existing international system led and maintained by the United States that impact on China than China's impact in the other direction. The changes that have occurred, are occurring, must occur in the international system are the result of a lot of developments in addition to China's rise. To me, rather remarkably overlooked by many folks who comment on China or on the current state of the international system. Among those often overlooked developments are such trivial things as the end of the Cold War, the demise of the Soviet Union, the integration of the former Warsaw, Warsaw Pact countries into the European Union, the rise of the other BRICS or the rise of the rest. But the important thing I want you to take away or remember as I frame the issue is that China's rise has been accomplished through, not despite, the US-led international system. The security system, the economic system, the wide range of other multinational, multilateral institutions, alliance structures, and so forth. And the China is on an evolutionary trajectory that began three and a half decades ago that is bringing it into greater congruence with the system it has joined than the system is adapting to China's very large footprint uh, on the world, mostly economic system. Many things have happened. Many countries are now rising countries. The day of the BRICS seems to have come and gone uh, as a meaningful grouping, but the rise of lots of countries, Turkey, Indonesia, Colombia, Vietnam, uh, is changing the way the world works. But China is not just another country. Size. 1.3 billion people on the way to 1.4 billion. That, that's not just another easily absorbed contributor or participant in the international system. It's also a country with a long history, notions of its rightful place in the global order. Uh, Chinese tradition, Chinese history, perceptions of China by neighboring countries, I think can safely be summarized as saying China's rightful place in the international system is at its head, or in a Chinese conception of world order at its center. It was once upon a time when the world was defined as China and its Asian periphery. There are some inside China and outside China that interpret what once was as the aspirations or the inevitable consequence of China's rise. My judgment is that 
It may sometime come to head the system, but not yet, and probably not for a long time. Come back to that point. My perception of China is one perception. And when I was a history major, I thought perceptions were interesting, but facts were what were really important. When I switched to political science, I realized that perceptions are reality. And perceptions of China's rise by folks inside of China, folks in the region, folks in the world more generally matter because they define or help define a political reality. They set expectations, they affect priorities, they shape policies. So judgments about the meaning of China's rise are fundamentally matters of perception. Some perceptions informed by facts and others informed by fear or overactive imaginations. What I want to do in the next 30 minutes or so is talk a little bit about what facilitated China's rise. How did this happen? A little bit on the current state of play, where things stand as of 2014 in terms of China's level of development, level of military capability, economic strength, and so forth. And then look at what to expect. Where are the trend lines headed, and how do policies built on perception affect the international system and the security situation as a part of the international situation. 